Hello my friends, welcome back to MTD North America. I'm so excited to be with my buddy Wade here today in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Partners in Think facility. Yes, this is one of those places where brilliant minds come together to help you create the processes you need. So Wade, thank you so much for being on MTD. Hey, thanks for being here, I appreciate it. It's absolutely a pleasure. We've known each other for a while, but we're really getting to know each other in person now. And you've invited me into this beautiful facility with the amazing Heimbuch family as well. <laughs> But let's talk about, firstly, what does Think Partners mean? What's it all about? Started in 2007, what did you guys bring on board? So this is really the brainchild of uh, our former company president who wanted to have a facility to utilize the power of, at that time, what we called the Think Control. So we developed a PC-oriented control in 2004. It hit the market mainstream 2005. In 2007, this facility opened up with the really the brainchild of being how do we develop better interfaces that can plug and play? Why do you need to do discrete IO hardwiring of interfaces? Why can't you plug in a robot and it recognize that's an Akuma machine, that's an Akuma control, here's all the handshaking that's got to take place. So from 2007, that's what really got this building started. THINK stands for the Intelligent Numerical Control. So a lot of people nowadays, they look at it and say we just misspelled THINK, but <laughs> <laughs> that's actually what the acronym's meant for. So we've evolved it from just being more of an interface focused type uh, group to really more of modern manufacturing. So when I look at all these different partners, we have people not only from the software side of things, but from the chip cutting side as well and work holding everything that it takes to actually produce a part. Well, Wade, you know better than I do because this is your thing. This is your baby. You've been doing it for a while. But me coming in here, I see a, what, a lot of what some people might consider competing companies, except when they're inside this building, Everyone's working together to create a better outcome, aren't they? Right. So, as you see, we're just one more name on, on the wall here. So we own the building, we own the facility, we're the only machine tool that we'll put on the floor for obvious reasons at that point. But all these partners, they all have to work together for the good of the customer. At the end of the day, it's a customer looking at an application and us trying to work together to find the best solution for it. Um, yesterday, we actually had three competing comp companies standing on the floor as Heinbuch came in, sitting there having a conversation together. Again, tell me any other facility where you would openly invite competitors to come in to get trained up on what some of these companies can offer. So this is really a sandbox. This is really a playground for these partner companies to have direct access to our equipment and to all of our engineering staff as well. So when Heinbuch, for an example, they want to come in and test a new product, They've got access to the machines. They actually have a door fob that allows them to walk in. I don't have to be here to let them in. They can come and go as they please. They have access to all of our application engineers so they can actually test and develop processes that's gonna help their company and eventually help the end user. Well, wait, something like this, it's gotta be one of those things where the more you help me create, the more you make off of me, right? It has to work just like that because this is too good to be true. <laughs> No, actually, um, this is a membership-based uh, organization. So this, this is a group, um, they pay an annual uh, due. That covers about a third of the cost to run the facility. Um, but we have no financial ties to anything they sell. So if you're looking at a bar feeder, for an example, you don't have to buy that bar feeder from us. You can work direct with the bar feeder company or the, the distributor that you're working with. We have no involvement in it. Um, it's not a financial tie from that aspect. We hope they sell all the, the equipment they can dream of. We don't have any, any financial tie to that whatsoever. Do you have a specific uh, project that you can think of where it was maybe either impossible or incredibly difficult, but then bringing multiple companies together allowed that end user to find success? Yeah, one in particular, and, and being this is uh, brought to us by Heinbuch, I'm going to use one that, that they were involved in. Um, we had a customer project that came in. Uh, it was actually driven by one of our CAD CAM companies. They were working on it. It's an actual customer part. Um, the guy was doing it in eight different operations, and we brought a team together to look at how do we take that part and, and get rid of some of the operations, some of the unnecessary steps. How do we process the part better? And they, they worked together as a team. Um, all I basically did is pull some people together, and then I got out of their way. Um, so they went together, put together the work holding, um, and I've been in, in machining for a long time. I've been an application engineer for a long time, and when I first looked at what they wanted to do, my, in my head, I'm like, that's not going to work. You know, I didn't think they could hold the part the way they were looking at doing it. We put it on the floor on one of our machines, set it up, and first thing we did is we spun the part in the work holding. So in my mind, I'm going, see, I'm right. Mm -hmm. I'm smarter than what you think, mm -hmm. right? 
Well, it turns out, as we start digging into it, we installed the drawbar incorrectly. We didn't have enough pull force. But that's where the partnership kind of comes into. I've got direct access. I had the phone number to the president of that company, work at Heinbuch at this point, called him direct to say, hey, we've got a problem here. They had their engineers look at it, figured out we installed the draw, draw bar incorrectly. We changed that out. Everything else worked correctly. But I look at that as how many parts, uh, and even when I was an AE, nothing ever plugged and played perfect the first time out, right? You program a part. There's testing that's got to get done. There's work holding. You realize there's a clamp that, that is somewhere where you didn't think it was going to be. Your tool extension's not right. There's always things that you got to work through. The beauty of all these partners working together is that gets proved out here. So then when that went to the customer's floor, he didn't relive the experience I lived. So all these partners worked together. They figured it out. They took that operation from eight operations to two operations. Um, decrease a lot of cycle time out of it. Well, now that we understand what it means, how it started, what the costs might be, the great success stories that you've shared, for someone who's watching right now that goes, well, shoot, i got to be a part of that, how did they become a part of it? So a lot of it is just a vetting uh, process. I try to only maintain about three competitor companies in any given space. So for an example, we've got uh, Iskar, Sandvik, and Kinemetal as cutting tool partners. Um, are there other companies out there that do cutting tools? Absolutely. But those are the three that we've got very strong relationships with. Um, two of those three have cubicles right here in the facility. This is their full-time office. Um, so we want to maintain that exclusivity. So we're not going to really open it up beyond that unless one of them decides to, to move on for whatever reason, then we might open that up. Um, so we look at, are there open spaces in manufacturing technology that we don't already have partners in that space? Um, and if so, then I want to vet that out and find out more about that technology. Um, but we want that relationship. At the end of the day, business is people doing business with people. And we need to have a small enough group that we can maintain really strong relationships and the guys at Heimbuch have my cell phone. They can call me anytime. I can call them anytime. And we have that trust that you need to really move business forward. Well, Wade, I like how you put all of this together, having competing companies, but bringing everyone together so they can support the industry as a whole. Thank you all for watching out there, learning a bit more about the Think Partners. Check out Wade's podcast, Shop Matters, and tune in to more videos from MTDCNC. We do appreciate you.